and welcome. This is Melissa Armel with the Stock Swoosh, and I'm reviewing here the Stock Swoosh Show Live Trading Room Advanced Trader Results Year to Date 2019. It is hard to believe, but it is almost December. One more month left, and 2019 will be over, and before you know it, it will be 2020. So really, really, really solid year, and looking to take it into a solid close for 2019. So this is Advanced Trader Profits. It's about a risk of 2,000 to 2,500 per trade. And again, that's risk per trade as far as equity day trades. This is not options. I call uh, equity trades in the live trading room, day trades, 504, 252. Some really good results for this year. If you have any questions, you can email me at melissa at the stockswish.com. You can call me at 929-3200-GAP. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. So earnings season is a great time to trade, and the good thing is that if you get into the class in December, you'll be all set to go when earnings season begins first quarter 2020 in January. So you would take the class in December, prepare yourself, get your account open after the class, and then join and be in the trading room then and get all the calls starting January 2020. So this is going back. Again, first part of this year, seems like so long ago, was off for a few days at the beginning of the year. Spy, first trade loser, second one winner. Room closed the 9th and 11th. 14th was Lulo, nice trade. Netflix was a good one on the 15th. 17th was Sig, three trades, one loser, two winners. AXP was a loser on the 18th. QQQs was a winner. Market closed on the 21st, it was Martin Luther King Day. SWK was a winner, COF was a winner, MKC was a loser, QQQs was a winner, Starbucks was a winner, CAT was a winner, GME was a winner, the 30th was T, T first trade loser, second one winner, Qs was a loser, second one winner, big winner in the market that day, and a winner in the spot. 31st was X, nice winner, Qs winner, and V was a loser. Some days, there's when I get up, there's no gaps that meet my criteria. So I have a very, very strict criteria that I look at each day. I look at 26 points when I'm rating the gaps to determine what stock tick or symbol to train. That's how I chose these ones and called the live trades in the room. So if something doesn't meet my 26 point criteria, I'm not, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it at all, okay? We're not doing anything. So the first and fourth, no trades. Fifth was off. EA was a loser. Twitter was a winner. Carb was a loser. Second trade, winner. No trades on the 11th. The 12th, UAA was a loser. Guild was a winner. Spy, big winner on the 12th. A lot of market trades this year. 13th was Tiva, loser. Spy, loser. Spy, second trade, winner. NTAP, two losers. MGM, winner. And Cisco was a loser. Spy was a winner on the 15th. Market closed on the 18th. WMT was a winner. CVS, first trade loser. Second one, winner. DPZ was a winner, KHC was a winner, room closed on the 25th, CAT, first trade loser, H2 was a loser, SJM was a loser. WTW was a winner, HPQ was a winner on the 28th. Then coming into March, SPY, first trade loser, second one winner, QQQs was a loser, TV day off, TRIP was a loser, Target was a loser, Target second trade winner, KR was a winner, COST, first trade loser, and the second one was a nice winner. No trades on the 11th. Stitch fix did not work at all. Two losers on that day, just didn't work. Off of the 13th, 14th was DG. Lost, first trade, second one worked. No trades on the 15th. OSTK, first trade lost, spy, lost, Facebook, nice winner. DSW was a winner, FDX, first trade lost, second one worked, and the third one lost. GS lost, CSIQ won. Nike was a good trade, no trades on the 25th, and TV day off on the 26th. Len, first trade loss, second and third one were great. That was one of the ones that needed a retake. Lulu was a winner on the 28th, 29th off. Spy was a winner on the 1st, which was getting into the spring period. WBA was a loser on the 1st and 2nd trade. Third trade worked, but that was a rough one that day. QQQs was a winner. Third was accused was a winner. Spy was a winner. Fourth and fifth off. BA was a winner on the eighth. The ninth BA was a loser. Disney was a big winner. Tenth was Disney again. Didn't work that day. Two losers in Disney. 
The options worked in Disney both days. Q's won. Spy won. The 11th was BBBY was a loser. WTW, big winner. Disney was a winner both days. The 15th, the Q's lost. First trade, second one worked. Disney lost. First trade, second one worked. 16th break even in the Q's and BAC was a winner. Then on the 17th, IBM was a loser. Q's was a loser. Second trade, small winner. And Apple was the bigger winner that day in the 17th. I forget if that was earnings. I think it might have been. 18th and 19th room closed. 22nd was Apple. Winner, Facebook winner. Twitter was a winner on the 23rd. 24th was IRBT winner. Two trades, nice gap. MO was a winner on the 25th. MMM was a loser. XLNX was a big winner. Two trades and just a huge move and a great gap. INTC was a loser on the 26th and WDC was a winner on the 26th as well. No trades on the 29th. The 30th, GLW was a loser. WY was a loser. MGM was a winner, both trades. Apple was a winner. HLF was a loser, both trades. ATVI was a loser, FTNT was a loser, QQQs uh, was a winner, and the SPY was a winner. Fast, first trade loser, and then Nike was a winner. This is getting into May. May was a good month. SPY was a winner, both trades. DDD was a winner on the 8th. The 9th was the Qs was a winner. SPY was a winner. <coughs> this was the earning season, too. May 10th was SYMC. Small loser, spy winner. Spy was a winner on the 13th, and Tiva was a winner on the 13th, too. No trades on the 14th. Tiva was a winner on the 15th. Spy was a loser. SWKS was a winner on the 16th. 17th was Baidu, a winner. Baidu on the 20th. Two trades, two winners. KSS was a winner on the 21st. 22nd was low. Two winners. Baidu was a winner. JWM was a winner. And the 23rd was the QQQs, a winner. 24th to the 31st, I was on vacation. Facebook was a winner on June 3rd. Fourth was TV day off. No trades in the fifth. Baidu first trade loss. AU was a winner. Domo was a winner on the seventh. The 10th, Lily was a winner. CRM was a winner. HDS was a loser. And Lily was a big winner on June 11th. June 12th, the Qs was break even. Facebook was a winner. 13th, Facebook was a loser. Twitter was a winner. June 14th, ABGO was a loser. QQQs was break even. Wasn't that much that day. <laughs> Remember that. Six, uh, 17th, no trades. 18th, Disney was a loser. HIP was a winner. Adobe was a nice winner on the 19th. 20th, was CCL was a winner. 21st, Spy was a loser. CCL was a winner. And BYND was a winner. No trades on the 24th. Baidu was a winner on the 25th. Baidu, 26 was a loser. Mew, winner. CAG was a winner on the 27th and no trades on the 28th. Then it was off for the July 4th. No trades on the 9th. Spy was a winner on the 10th. The 11th was BBBY, a winner. Spy was a winner on the 12th and no trades on the 15th. DPZ was a loser and then a winner on the 16th and GS was a winner on the 16th as well. 17th was CSX, was a winner. 18th was URI, loser. Netflix, winner. No trades on the 19th. AMAT was a winner. TV day off on the 23rd. UPS was a big winner on the 24th, and Tut was a loser. Tesla was a nice winner on the 25th, and Starbucks on the 26th. No trades on the 29th. UAA worked on the 30th, and T2 was a big winner on the 31st. So this was earnings season in the summer, which you do have earnings season in the summer months. <laughs> which not everybody knows. August was BYND. A lot of trades in that this year. Winner, August 2nd. Square was a loser. NTAP winner. QQQs was a winner on the 5th. No trades on the 6th. 8-7 was the QQQs winner. KHC was a winner on the 8th. No trades on the 9th. The SPY was a winner. No trades on the 13th. 14th was M was a winner. KSS was a winner. Off on the 15th, 16th. No trades on the 19th. The 20th was HD, nice winner. Low was a loser, Target was a winner. LB was a winner, Foot Locker was a winner on the 23rd. Big winner on BMW. No trades on the 26th, SJM was a winner on the 27th. Spy, two trades lost, one break even, and then Target lost, and Target was a winner. 20, that was the 28th of August. 
BBY was a winner on the 29th and Alta. Nice solid gain on the 30th. Then into the fall period, off for Labor Day, 916 was AAL. Loser, Q is break even. GLW is break even. KHC was a winner. FDX was a winner. X was a winner. Spy was a winner. This was 920. No trades in the 23rd or 24th. Nike was a loser. CCO was a winner. And Mew was a winner on the 27th. Mew was a winner on the 30th. AMD was a winner. Q's was a winner. No trades in this third. And HPQ was a winner. No trades in the 7th. Off on the 8th. Netflix was a winner. Off on the 10th and 11th. No trades on the 14th. Goldman was a winner. W Day was a winner. Adobe was a loser in the first trade. Second one worked. IBM solid winner. J and J solid winner. No trades in the 21st. UPS was a winner. Second trade loser. MCD big winner. Huge gap. 23rd was accused loss, then a win. Lily was a loser. Twitter was a big winner on the 24th. eBay two trades, one loss, one one. And the room closed on the 25th. Spy was a winner on the 28th. 1029 was BYND. Four losers in that. That was just very difficult, and it didn't work. Grub was a winner. TXRH was a big winner. And then Grub again, two trades on the 29th. Yum was a home run. Three good trades on the 30th. Facebook was a winner on the 31st. Q's was a winner on the 1st. Spy was a winner on the 1st. UAA was a loser. MCD was a loser. And then the second trade worked an MCD in the 4th. And UAA second trade worked too. So sometimes they require a retake. That's why you use stops. The fifth one was Uber, loser, Shaq, loser, Shaq, winner. CVS was a winner. Spy was a winner. EXP was a winner on the 7th. Disney, two trades, one winner, one loser. Room closed on the 11th. JWM was a loser and Q's was a winner and Spy was a winner on the 12th. Spy was a loser on the 13th and Disney, absolutely huge winner on the 13th. That's the day that it had that big spike. 14th was Cisco winner. Aim at winner on the 15th, 18th was no trades, 19th was KSS, two trades failed, M2 trades that were positive, and HD was a nice winner on the 19th. That was the big one. 20th was low, was a loser, Target was a winner, another big one in Target. M lost, Lazy Boy lost, and EFT, ETFC was a winner on the 21st, and Foot Locker was a nice solid gain on the 22nd. So, all in all, these are... All the ticker symbols that I called in the live trading room for the year of so far year today, 2019, uh, into the end of November here, average risk per trade was 2,500 per trade. And again, I teach people to use stops and I call the stop in the room. I call the entry in the room, I call the stop in the room, and I call the exit in the room. Now, some of those trades went on to go longer. You could hold it if you want to. You could take half out, hold it. You could take the trade, get, let it drop. If you're in a short, put the stop break even. I don't do that, but you can decide your own money management. But I do give the entry, the stop, and the exit in the room live. And the ticker symbol, obviously, we're doing each day, or if we're doing more than one. I think it's a huge benefit to be in the room. Get my call in the market. Um, and it's just a big, a, big, a big benefit overall. If you're interested in working for yourself and actually trading and doing this, then you can take my Golden Gap course and learn from me. So the Golden Gap course, the last class of the year, is December 14th and 15th, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Cost of the class is $64.99 U.S. dollars. Class is online. Email me at melissathestockswoosh.com to register. Sign up early to secure your spot. Okay, if you want to get into this class, this is the last class of the year if you want to learn and join for January. The Trends course is December 17th, noon to 3. Class is online, $69.99 U.S. dollars. Don't miss it. You save, but you sign up for both. Okay, so think about this. If you're interested in joining, it is going to be a fabulous, fabulous, fabulous 2020. And if you just want to do options trades, I have an options newsletter. That is not the same trades that I called here. I do not call the same trades that I call in the trading room as the options newsletter. They are different. But if you don't want to do day trades or don't have time, then you can sign up for the options annual newsletter separately. It's $59.99 a year, and the class is not a prerequisite. You must take the class in order to join the live trading room. The options newsletter, you don't learn the system, but you get the trades emailed to you. So it's whatever works for you based on your schedule. And again, everybody has a different schedule that they're working on depending with their job or their family or their life. Good luck, everyone. If you're interested in more information, email me at melissa at thestockswoosh.com. Have a great day.